welcome to aetcm the emergency medicine channel so last presentation itself we started respiratory emergencies in this first part we'll discuss the respiratory system assessment uh, what are the things we have to keep in mind those are the things we discussed in last part so in this part we'll discuss upper airway obstruction in followed by in the lower airway obstruction and then followed by other condition we'll go with a step by step so in this part upper airway obstruction so content of our presentation anatomical obstruction inflammation by the infection and then aspiration so in this part what are the clinical important things we have to remember more specifically how we have to manage those cases in pre hospital scenarios those are the things we'll do tomorrow today so first thing so before getting into the obstruction part so generally our airway obstruction will Uh, happen by the two major causes either it may uh, either it may be due to an anatomical obstruction or either it's due to one mechanical obstructions anatomical in the sense in unresponsive cases what will happen the all the muscle tone will loss so all the muscle tone means that include tongue also so simply the tongue will fall over the trachea and then that will um, obstruct the passage of air that is comes under the anatomical obstruction so tongue fall is an anatomical obstruction second thing is an this is the passage of airway any blockage by any swelling swelling in the sense edema cases if anaphylaxis means laryngeal edema will happen so if any edema happening means that will also block the passage of air that will cause the airway obstruction so these are the category comes under the anatomical obstruction mechanical obstruction in the sense that is a foreign body airway obstruction foreign body any foreign body dislodged in the uh, airway passage of airway means that will cause the airway obstruction so these are the two major condition either it may due to an anatomical or mechanical or both also it will happen if any foreign body that will obstruct the airway means that will form the uh, that will cause the inflammation again inflammation will cause the the tuber collar dollar tuber those are the things will cause no so again it will form a edema and then it will cause the anatomical it leads to the ultimately airway obstruction so with this point if you looking this means so these are the clinical importance we told like unresponsive patient if you are finding any unresponsive person they are more prone to go with an anatomical obstruction their tongue simply fall over the trachea and then that will obstruct the passage of airway so these are the some condition here we are mentioning uh, for the unresponsiveness like insulin shock and then person who had a seizure and then person who were intoxicated either due to an alcohol or any other drug overdose and then cardiac arrest those are the various scenarios that will cause the unresponsive state in unresponsive state all the muscle tone will lost including the tongue so the tongue simply fall over the trachea and then it will obstruct the passage of air a simple concept so what are the uh, most important assessment uh, wise thing we have to keep in mind means just remember our format for the emergency medicine so we'll always we'll start with an scene size up and scene safety and then we'll do the generalized impression otherwise initial 10 second assessment and then third part will go the um, mental status assessment by the avpu scale and then fourth thing will go for the primary survey and the nudgens primary survey means airway breathing circulation disability exposure if it is a trauma means we'll add on cervical spine protection and then ventilation and hemorrhagic control those are the things so urgent in the sense what are the add on things we are um, giving additionally what we are doing along with the primary survey in pre hospital mainly we'll do the grbs monitoring means uh, generalized uh, random blood glucose level that we'll do but inside the ed in our er uh, inside the hospital in er we'll do the point of care we'll do and then we'll do the chest x ray we'll do and then any abg related things we'll do so those are the add on urgent things then we'll go the for the reassessment phase and then we'll de deal with an transport related decision and then still you have a time means you can go for the secondary assessment head to toe head to foot assessment and then here also we'll go the urgents uh, most probably in pre hospital we won't go with an urgents 
if inside the hospital means urgent in the sense any ct mri otherwise if any further things they were needed advanced imaging needed means they will go for but in pre hospital we we'll, we don't have a time and then we don't have those much of equipments so we'll do this uh, secondary assessment and then we'll do again the last part reassessment and then again uh, transport to the definitive care this is the set of format we are following in this if you focus the first two means that is a scene size up and then generalized impression that is somewhat analyzing the scene and then analyzing the person itself but once when we are starting communicating otherwise when we are uh, more focusing on the person means from third step itself we are communicating otherwise we are focusing on patient care so ultimately patient care start from the scene size up itself but here we are securing the scene and then we are just inspecting the skin inspecting the person itself but from the third step mainly we are end focusing and then we are enlightening the person so here we are first we are uh, uh, they are telling like a we first step we have to assess the mental status what is the importance of mental status straightly we can go for if the person a cardiac arrest otherwise uh, like if the person is Mm, some unresponsive state or drowsy means straightly we can treat the causes no why we want to go with a mental status then we have to go with a primary surgery so why they are imposing mental status means you think if you are approaching one person if you are asking something the person is uh, alert and then he is awake he is oriented to you means you can think the person apparently otherwise the person at the time he is okay and then he is normal he is alert anyway we have to reach a once after and sometime or within 15 minutes interval or as frequent as possible we have to reach it if the person falls in the category of he is responding only for the verbal stimuli or he is responding only for the pain stimuli or he is not responding anything means you have to think the severity of the aspiration or severity of the further worsening of the condition is more so that's why they are emphasizing first approaching the person first approach itself we have to assess the mental status of the person so as like we told if the person is awake and alert means so you can take some time and then you can reassess in between so if the person only responding with an voice or a pain or unresponsive means you have to take the more aggressive manner more aggressive step of management you have to take for so that is the thing they were mention it is a fundamental skill for the paramedic we you, we should know that these are the things to assess and then main the time uh, managing wise second thing any decreased level of consciousness particularly a person in a supine position they are risk for the some more upper airway obstruction and then these are the abnormal airway sounds so in last presentation we discussed regarding abnormal breathing sound like crackles rails and then strider and then wheezing those are things last part we discussed this is the abnormal airway sounds so snoring snoring strider gargling squeaking and then bubbling sound so snoring all we know it is a melodious sound so it's a melodious sound uh, we hear uh, daily we are hearing those other things so snoring in the sense if the airway is partially obstructed in the sense that will cause the snoring sound so it is a trachea means your uh, tongue partially that will obstruct the airway so the air will go in and out with the obstructed partially obstructed airway that will create some sound that is a snoring sound the strider so last class we told you, we have a mnemonic of os operating software related thing. so if any obstruction in the above the glottis or within the glottis means that will cause the strider sound mean the same times if the person using accessory muscle in adult if uh, otherwise in pediatric cases if any muscle retraction bone retraction is there means the under case also you will get a strider sound so strider will happen if any obstruction within or above the glottis that will produce the strider sound second thing if the person uh, having a accessory muscle use is in uh, breathing difficulty if the person is using the accessory muscle so accessory muscle uses last presentation we told simply put off the collar you can see the sternocleidomastoid muscle if you want uh, inhalation 
while the time of exhalation they will use the abdominal muscle so if the baby means the bone will retract inward uh, inward like uh, it make a cavity like a thing so uh, you can see the picture of retraction that will happen in the case of pediatric cases in that case also that will produce the strider sound so other sounds like a gargling squeaking squeaking and then bubbling sound also will happen in the case of abnormal airway obstruction abnormal airway sounds so these are the set of assessment we have to keep in mind and so next is the management how we have to uh, manage this condition so first thing the first important thing we have to keep in mind is that whichever emergency first position the person if it is either it may be hypoglycemia otherwise if the person is vomiting otherwise if the person in seizure whichever condition first important foremost step is positioning the person here we are go giving the position of left lateral otherwise we can tell us a left recommend position otherwise um, recovery position whichever way we can call it for so placing a left lateral it's a simple thing take a right hand and then right palm place it over the left ear overlap overlap over the ear and then flex the knee flex the right knee overlap and then place it over the other side so it will form a l like a shape uh, initially we'll place the right palm over the right hand over the left ear so it will provide if you want you can give a support of pillow, pillow of support from the uh, um, back side posterior side and then in between of the leg also we can provide the pillow support so here the important question is why left lateral why not la right lateral so why we want to in recovery position why we want to place the person in left lateral position the first thing is then think about your stomach so it will use this is your stomach if you're placing the person in left lateral means that will shift your stomach to the left side so if you are shifting to the left side means that will uh, create that some pressure so the stomach content easily that won't get out from the esophagus and then it won't reach to the trachea if you placing the stomach to the right side means the curvature will move this side so simply that content will get into the esophagus and then come out that is the first reason second reason think about your trachea so this is the trachea and then this is the right bronchus this is the left bronchus right bronchus this is the left bronchus this is the area of carina so your right bronchus have a shorter and then it will divide very acute angle compare with the left bronchus it is a shorter and then it will divide very acute angle compared with an left bronchus if you are placing in uh, left lateral means so it will the right bronchus will go up so if sometimes aspiration happens means it won't as much as reaches to the uh, right side of the part if you are placing in left lateral means it will easily go because of the gravity first reason second thing with the uh, greatest simple acute angle that is the second reason third one is a, it's a shorter one so the simply the aspirated content will reach the right lung and then it will cause the further worsening of condition that's why we are placing the person in left lateral position first thing it's regarding the airway related thing second thing we are shifting the stomach into the left side so second thing first thing we position the patient that is a left lateral position second thing we have to reposition the airway that's why we have a, some um, uh, basic airway techniques we have we'll see the upcoming slide second thing if the person still the person have a excessive sharp tissue means they will go for the surgical incision surgically they will remove and then they will go for the some surgical incision procedure related thing that and all we know need just to keep in mind but uh, these are the basic airway techniques like head tilt chin lift jaw thrust and then dunk tunk jaw thrust maneuver head tilt chin lift means place one hand over the forehead place one hand over the mandible and then slightly tilt the head and then lift the chin that is the one type of technique and next is the jaw thrust jaw thrust means your thumb should be placed over the uh, 
zygomatic arc and then other thing is spread over the angle of the mandible just to displace the mandible in upward. So that is the other technique. Tongue jaw thrust mainly will, these are the things we you can use for the ventilation purpose. But tongue jaw thrust manual mainly we are using to open the oral cavity, it is not for the ventilation. Just if you want to do the any suction, otherwise if you want to do any, want to insert any oropharyngeal airway means there we are using the tongue jaw lip manual. It means just to carry the one, to stabilize the one hand over the forehead and then with the other uh, thumb you can open the airway, you can pull it, straightly pull it out the, not pull, straightly you can uh, move away from tongue jaw lip. And then third one is a tongue jaw lip manuarism. It's just, it's not for ventilation. It's just for to open the oral cavity. If you want to suction, otherwise if you want to insert a um, oropharyngeal airway means, that is the case, we are opening the oral cavity. Just stabilize one hand, place over the forehead and then stabilize one hand with the head and then other hand you can simply open the oral cavity. That is the thing. So when we have to do the head till chin lift, if the person we are suspecting if the person not involved in trauma related thing means then you can do the head tilt chin lift. If the person involved in trauma means there you have to do the jaw thrust manual. The important thing here we are displacing the mandible alone. The cervical should be in neutral position that is most important thing. The, again the second important thing in head so in head tilt chin lift manual we will straighten the airway. Straighten the airway means we will uh, we will try to bring the airway axis in the straight alignment. How means this is the pharyngeal axis, somehow it will come like this. It is the oral axis, somehow it will come like this. So you can see pharyngeal axis, it is going like this. Oral axis, somehow it is like this. So almost in the same line almost in the same line, not exactly but still also you can uh, flex the uh, cervical region and then still also you can go for. So almost you will reach the straight angle but in the case of jaw thrust, here this is the pharyngeal angle, this is the oral angle. So there we are not uh, straightening the airway axis, just we are pull it out the mandible and then we are displacing the mandible by to clear the or, uh, tongue. To clear the tongue, we are just displacing the mandible alone. So the most important thing here, we are straightening the airway axis, there we are displacing the tongue alone. And then third one is the oro and nasopharyngeal airway insertion. These are the basic airway technique skills. First one, this is the, we, we have to select the appropriate size by measuring the it should not be too large or too short. So how we have to select, so we have to place the flange over the corner of the mouth and then other tip over the ear lobe. So corner of the mouth to the ear lobe and then measure this and take the appropriate size. And then the insertion wise, we have a two techniques. First technique is a 180 degree technique. Second technique is a 90 degree technique. This is the technique of 90 degree technique. So, invert the oropharyngeal airway, just open the, uh, you can use the our, um, so this is about, the, so second thing is an, Oro and nasopharyngeal airway. So, oro and nasopharyngeal airway it also comes in the category of airway urgence, basic airway urgence. So, how we have to select the oro nasopharyngeal airway should not be uh, greater in size, means it should not be larger or it should not be smaller, though uh, both are waist. So, we have to take the appropriate size. So, by measurement distance, uh, the flank should be placed over the corner of mouth and then other end we have to place over the angle of mandible. So, corner of the mouth to the angle of the mandible, take the appropriate size. So insertion wise we have a two methods, first method is a 180 degree method, second method is a 90 degree method. 
this is the 90 degree method 90 degree means just invert the uh, this is the normal here you can see this is the normal position of the oropharyngeal airway normal anatomy so just invert like this uh, you just invert the oropharyngeal airway and then open the um, oral cavity depress so that rigid portion you just depress in the tongue and then once if you reach the soft palate and then you can re-invert the oropharyngeal airway and then 90 degree in the sense if the airway is like this means 90 that is the 90 degree 180 degree means with the same manner with the same manner we are approaching lateral wall of the mouth once you reach the um, posterior once you reach the posterior wall of the pharynx or once you reach the soft palate there you can tilt or there, there you can invert the oropharyngeal airway so 180 180 degree means with the same manner you are approaching the either left or right side of the lateral wall of the oral cavity and then you are tilting the other thing uh, 90 degree means you are tilting or you are inverting the oropharyngeal airway you are compressing over the tongue and then once you reach the soft palate there you are rotating the airway that is the oro and oropharyngeal airway insertion mainly this thing we are uh, placing the person doesn't have any um, gag reflex means mainly we are placing the oropharyngeal airway if the person have a gag reflex means there we should not go with an oropharyngeal airway straight away we have to go with a nasopharyngeal airway so second one is a nasopharyngeal airway nasopharyngeal airway means it's a rubber tube like a structure it's a flexible tube like a success so before insertion the same method we have to take the appropriate size by measuring the flange over the tip of the nose and then end, uh, that other end the distal end over the ear lobe so from tip of the nose to ear lobe and then measure the take the appropriate size lubricate it and then you have to check the which nostril i am going to insert because the patency of the nostrils also most important before insertion just to check any polyps or any obstruction in there uh, is there or not just you have to check so next important thing we have to keep in mind is a, a deviated nasal septum deviated nasal septum in the sense so this is the septum usually it will uh, usually our septum will should uh, will be in the central so it is the right nostril it is a left nostril but in nasal deviated septum how it will uh, form means so that will form so this is the nostril means so it is a right nostril it is a left nostril so you can see this side have a larger portion this side have a smaller portion of the area of uh, the radius whole the circumference so what we prompt to do so we will see the larger hole so straight away we'll insert the airway into that larger hole that's a mistake what we are doing but what will happen if deviated septum cases what will happen in distally or more uh, internally means so the outer region have a more circumference but inner region that will deviate to the more left side means that area inside the nasal cavity will reduce here you have a reduced area but in other side other nostrils you will get a smaller hole but inner side you will have a larger circumference so before inserting nasopharyngeal airway first check patency and then if any polyps or any obstruction is there or not second thing by visual um, just to check the where the septum deviated so which part we have to go for so those are the two important things we have to keep in mind and then second thing is an so that's about the first part second part is an any infection that will cause the inflammation that leads to the airway obstruction so first thing a variety of infection that will cause the swelling in the upper airway like uh, infection like laryngotracheobronchitis that is called crub and then any inflamed palatine tonsil most important uh, most common causes for the crub is an infection related thing that is in specific viral is a more common cause any allergic otherwise foreign body of airway obstruction also will cause the crub so what is the characteristics that will cause means that will show the clinical features of strider hoarseness of voice parking of those are the common things that will happen in the case of strider but it will more specifically in the infant and small children 
why it is affecting more specific in infant and uh, small children compared with an adult means so before going into that law just this, this is the normal anatomy of the adult and then pediatric cases here you can see the differences first we'll start from the oral cavity so this is the oral cavity here for compared with an adult the pediatric have a tongue is a larger proportion in the mouth so here you can see mean the same things here you can here also you can compare the coming into the pharynx part so the nasopharynx oropharynx laryngopharynx is a smaller but you have a wide here in adult cases here you have a wider space coming into the epiglottis that is larger and floppier here it is in a normal position that is in the epiglottis is a larger coming into the larynx it is more anterior and then more superior it is in a normal position in adult cases and then more narrowest part in the pediatric airway is a cricoid cartilage cricoid cartilage and then trachea is a narrow and then less rigid it is a fragile one uh, how we can remember means uh, that is a spring spring roll um, easily you can remember with a uh, spring roll uh, tube no that where we are using our wash basin or sink so the spring roll uh, tube that is like a structure the whole structure will like a funnel so it the pediatric airway the whole structure it will looks like a funnel like a shape so these are the difference between the adult and then ch pediatric child upper airway so in this view, so in this view if you think about the poises law means so what is mean by poises law means the rate of flow is directly proportional to the fourth power of radius and then uh, indirectly proportional to the length so here we are focusing on the radius part already the uh, in child cases there will be a narrow radius narrow circumference still more if you are if the person have a additionally any edema or if the person have any foreign body obstruction means that will straight away will reduce the radius that will affect the rate of flow rate of flow means that air entry that will create the increase resistance to the air so that is why it's more common in children cases and then uh, these are the other inflammatory causes like epiglottitis and then peritonsillar abscess in epiglottitis it's a severe rapidly progressive inflammation that will affect the epiglottis and then surrounding tissue usually it caused by the infection the clinical features are sore throat fever crawling coarseness and then purposeful hyper extension of the neck peritonsillar abscess in the sense that it is more common in young adults that abscess will form near the one pharyngeal tonsil symptoms include the fever and the sore throat so here here we should not manipulate the airway otherwise under the visor we have to carefully manipulate the airway what will happen if you are um, unaware about those condition means so these are the exudate these are the abscess formation so while the time of manipulation if any breach or if any break happen means if the person have a consciousness consciousness or a, a intact gag reflex means that won't cause that much of problem simply we, he will cuff it out and then he will expel if the person doesn't have a consciousness means intact uh, doesn't have any intact gag reflex means straight away it will reach the lung and then it will uh, first furtherly it will worsen the condition the third thing it's a retropharyngeal abscess that is more common in the children cases that will affect the any infection in the retropharyngeal area limb nodes or any direct pharyngeal trauma signs and symptoms include the fever and the sudden strider here also carefully we have to manipulate the airway if you are not uh, getting that much of confidence means don't manipulate the airway second fourth one is the diphtheria that is the causative organism that will affect and kill the layer of the epithelial tissue that creating some pseudo membrane over that area so additional layer is forming again the circumference will reduce the rate of flow will increase rate of flow will sorry the rate of flow will decrease resistance will increase here also we should not manipulate the airway otherwise carefully we have to manipulate the airway fifth thing is the enlarged tonsil so the palatine tonsil can swell excessively sometimes it have a size of like a golf ball like a size 
so it associated with a fever difficult swallowing throat pain here also carefully we have to manipulate the airway so what are the management as like we told we have to carefully manipulate the airway if you are not confident with that means we should not manipulate the airway manipulation of the airway in this sense head tilt chin lift jaw thrust maneuver if you are going uh, put any uh, urgent airway urgent that is the manipulation of airway so if you are going ventilating the person means carefully you have to do the bag mask ventilation so that is one important thing you should not aggressively or uh, push or you, you should not aggressively give the complete squeeze of the bag gently press with a half of the bag and then release gently we have to give the ventilation the second uh, the next important thing is if you are going with an any advanced airway any if you are going with an any endotracheal tube into patient means usually we are for adult cases 7 to adult main means 7 to 7.5 will choose so next thing is an if you are going with an any endotracheal intubation means there we have to choose the at least two full size smaller than the normal zines means if in normal adult male will choose the 7 to 7.5 7 to 7.5 will suits choose if the person have any obstruction otherwise uh, above mentioned condition means there you have to choose the two full size minus means 7 means 5 it's a appropriate size we have to take one so if the effort fails after a single attempt mean then we can go for the needle or surgical cricotherapy so full about the pre hospital scenarios first you are doing the basic airway management so if the person doesn't have any gag reflex otherwise worsening of the condition means there you are going with an advanced airway that is endotracheal tube intubation so still if you are, you are not aware otherwise you are not experienced otherwise uh, unable to um, intubate the patient means there we are going with the needle and surgical cricotherapy so needle cricotherapy whomever can perform it is a easy technique so first extend the neck it is called a sniffing position just to place the sniffing position And then here you can identify the first prominent is an hyoid so the term is an htc 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 means first prominence if you palpate mean first prominence is a hyoid cartilage followed by thyroid cartilage followed by cricoid cartilage that's why we told htc hyoid cartilage thyroid cartilage and then cricoid cartilage so in between the thyroid and then cricoid we are going to put the needle that is called needle cricothyrotomy so identify the location and then hold the larynx so that is hold the trachea with the two hands so second step catheter insertion how to insert the catheter so just to take the iv catheter Uh, orange or gray orange in the sense 14 gauze otherwise gray in the sense 16 gauze that should attached with an um, 10 ml syringe that filled with an uh, saline either we can fill up the 3 to 5 ml of saline we have to fill so just to inwards insert the towards the foot end insert the towards the foot end while the time of insertion aspirate the syringe and then slightly aspirate the syringe aspirate the syringe and then insert aspirate the syringe insert once you got the air bubble just to stop there and then remove the uh, guiding uh, the needle and then you can secure and then you can ventilate the person here we are play it is a needle insertion third thing is how we can connect with an ambu or uh, with whichever thing so straight away you can here you can connect that uh, o2 tubing also you can connect otherwise this is another technique you have to take the any 3 ml or 5 ml or 10 ml syringe make a hole here hole means just to make a one hole in the, in this side and then opposite side of the syringe so make a hole both side and then here you can connect the et tube connector universal ut tube connector we know no 15 mm that universal connector you just connect and then moreover you can attach whichever thing uh, you can attach the amp also so here first for ventilating ventilating the person first close the hole so we made a two hole over the 10 ml syringe no close the hole squeeze the bag and then release the hole area so so first we are providing the inhalation by releasing the hole you will allow the gas to the expire 
So close the hole, squeeze the bag and then release. Close the hole, squeeze the bag and then release. This is the way of technique we can approach the needle cricothyrotomy. Next thing is a aspiration is a next condition. Aspiration in the sense inhalation of anything other than the breathable gases. It is called aspiration. So it is most common in older patients and then person who have um, unresponsive, unconscious status, those are the risks for the aspiration. So here in older patients, they have a chronic aspiration of food is a common cause of the pneumonia from the bacteria in the aspirated material. Means in older cases, what will happen means they have a diminished gag reflex. So, the content of the stomach easily will reach out the trachea and then that will cause the pneumonia. That is pneumonia that is called as a aspiration pneumonia or chemical pneumonitis or Mendelssohn syndrome. Mendelssohn syndrome. That is called Mendelssohn syndrome. And then other thing, the aspiration of stomach content carries the additional risk of aspiration pneumonitis in which gastric acid that will irritate the lung tissue also. Next is the risk factors whom and all risk for the aspiration. First one, intoxication, any trauma, otherwise uh, when the gag reflex has diminished after, after a stroke, any neurological dysfunction, consequences of aging. We don't know that aging will cause the diminished gag reflex. Otherwise, older person, low GCS patient who received the tube feedings, any nasogastric tube feedings, orogastric tube feeding means that will also cause the aspiration. These are the some risk factors. So, so in assessment part, what are the things we have to keep in mind? First one, did the breathing difficulty occur immediately after eating or not? That is the first thing. Second thing, does the patient have any gastric feeding, feeding tube, any nasogastric or orogastric tube? If yes means when they were given the last feeding, what is the quantity, what is the volume or what is how much they were given, quantity we have to mention. And then is there any material suction from the patient there with the same color as the tube feeding. So it will give a clue of aspirator of the gastric content. Then fourth thing is the, is there particulate matter in the suctioned material. So these are the things we have to assess and then we have to mention in our recordings also we have to uh, keep in mind for the further management. And then fever and cup may present several hours after an aspiration prone event such as a seizure or an, or an episode of unresponsiveness. So the cough and fever that will persist for the long time. So some patients aspirate chronically and may have a history of aspiration of pneumonia. So they, those are the past history. This is sir, how we have to manage the aspirated patient. So first point is sir, reduce the risk of aspiration means the prevention is the better than cure. So here, if you are finding the person with the unresponsive state means, so the person is more prone to risk of aspiration. So simply put a orogastric or nasogastric tube and then yeah, just decompress the stomach. So because we don't know when the person had food, either he is in, either he had something or not, we don't know. But assume like a full stomach, just insert to or any orogastric or nasogastric tube decompress the stomach. That is the first step. Second step, aggressively monitor the patient's ability to protect his or her own airway. She or, he or she have a patent airway, otherwise he or she have any intact gag reflex is there or not. And protect the person airway with the advanced airway when needed. If the person doesn't have an intact um, gag reflex means, then we are going with an advanced airway. So there we uh, discussed the basic airway techniques, advanced airway in the sense our endotracheal tube, tracheostomy tube, uh, those are the things, laryngeal mask airway also blind insertion device. Here mainly we are in pre-hospital, we are using the endotracheal tube, laryngeal mask airway, King LDD. Uh, if you have in your um, ambulance crew, you can use. So first thing, we reduce the risk, we decomp decompress the stomach. Second thing, we are checking the gag reflex. If the person doesn't have a gag reflex, means we are going with an advanced airway. Third thing, 
if it is not work out again the risk of aspiration otherwise the person get aspirated means here we are going with an succeeding and then airway control techniques so succeeding will uh, see the next slide succeeding and then we are doing the airway control means we are inserting the advanced airway techniques so the next thing is sir so next important uh, clinical thing we have to remember is sir patient who are is risk for aspiration they should not drink or eat anything at the time of difficulty in breathing so usually our people if uh, they found any person in unresponsive or collapsible state collapsible state means they will wake up the person first they will give the drink or cola or something only so that should not be second thing if you found any person with aspiration or if you found any unresponsive person with the obstructive airway means unresponsive state means straight away basic life support no other manuals second thing that is also fails to clear means then you can go with a general laryngoscope with a magal forceps you can use if necessary you can perform the if severe obstruction in the upper airway in a laryngeal uh, laryngeal edema or uh, the tonsil those are the obstructed means there is no way for the approach to the oral cavity means simply you can go with a needle or surgical cricothyroidectomy if you are um, set up they are allowing you means you can simply go with a needle cricothyroidectomy because there we are puncturing below the glottis only so usually they are will uh, in temporary manner we can easily manage the condition so succeeding wise these are the various equipment this is the wall mounted this is the battery operated one this is the manually operated one uh, i think uh, we have most ambulances have a uh, wall fixed wall mounted one uh, it is uh, operated by the battery of the vehicle so we mostly we are using this one and then these are the various suction catheters this is a younger suction that is a flexible whistle tip uh, suction catheter younger suction other name tonsil tip catheter it is a, a good choice for the succeeding the oropharynx because it have a wide diameter tips and then it is a rigid catheter coming into the other thing that is a whistle type catheters uh, mostly they are used in situation in which rigid catheter can't be used like uh, those are the condition if the person have a stoma otherwise if the person have a teeth or clenched status means there you can use the uh, whistle type catheter if the person have a, a clenched teeth means you can easily approach with a lateral wall of the oral cavity and then you can easily reach out the posterior uh, posterior wall posterior wall of the pharynx so that catheter you can use so in that cases we should not we can't use the uh, younger suction so these are the different catheters we have so technique of suctioning so here we have to measure like a how much depth we want to go because if you are over inserting means that will uh, damage the posterior pharyngeal wall or any soft uh, structure in the airway so that's why we are uh, measuring how much depth we want to go first distal end you just place over the uh, ear lobe and then other end that will place on the corner of the mouth mark the uh, mark the site and which depth we want to go and then slightly tilt the person head to the one end and then you can open the suction and then you can easily suck it out so if you by the way of tilting means easily you can visualize so you easily you can clear the airway so these are the technique for the suction while doing and suctioning before and then after suctioning we have to ventilate the person if the person have a definitive or advanced airway and then if you are doing a younger suction means always measure the uh, spo2 level with the portable uh, your uh, pulse oximetry because he, the person easily they will go uh, go into the hypoxic state so that also we have to keep in mind so, so until this three major condition we discussed in upper airway obstruction first one anatomical obstruction inflammation by the infection third one is aspiration those are the set of assessment and then management part the next part will discuss the Uh, lower airway obstruction so do your best shallow